Have you ever watched a scary movie and just couldn't look away no matter how awful it got? Turns out you weren't the only one in the room. Hey Cinemaphiles, Julia here for DNews. Movie makers are master manipulators. They've got you twisting your emotions this way and that down to a science. And in fact, they're even turning to science to learn more about how to get even better at making you cry when Mufasa dies or making you scream when Johnny hatchets through a door. Recently, researchers from the University of Nottingham were curious about how scary movies make people nervous. So they hooked up people to machines to read electrodermal activity, or basically how much they sweat. They showed volunteers 32 scary scenes, with four varying types of suspense like direct suspense. First person, we think we're the character in the film. Shared, when we empathize with the character. Vicarious, when we know the character's in danger, but they don't. And composite, direct, shared, and vicarious suspense synchronized together. The researchers found that movies are scariest when the character doesn't know what's going to happen, and when we experience vicarious suspense. Basically, we freak the heck out when we know something bad is about to happen to a character, but the character has no clue. Something Alfred Hitchcock was the bomb at. So when we're watching a movie, we might all sweat together, and even blink together. According to a study published in the Proceedings of the Royal Society B, researchers from the University of Tokyo monitored the eye movements and blinks from subjects as they watched a short clip from Mr. Bean. They thought that most people might blink at the end of a scene at an obvious break, which was true. But they also found that blinks tended to happen during implicit breaks. These blinks happened during non-critical moments in the scenes, at the end of an action, or when the main character wasn't on screen. The blinks synced up between 23 and 31 percent of the time. And maybe this blinking is an expression of something going on a little deeper. The crazy thing is movies can also sync up our brains, according to a study published in the journal NeuroImage. Using a technique called MEG, the researchers from Aalto University in Finland were able to track brain activity down to fractions of a second. And they found that people's brains tend to light up in the same places during the same moments when watching movies. And this makes sense for things like movement and facial recognition. And that backed up earlier studies, like one published in 2004 in the journal Science that found that when people watched a clip from the good, the bad, and the ugly, their brains had the same fluctuations at the same time. And you'd expect people's auditory and visual cortices to sync up when they are seeing the same thing. And that's what good directing and good editing do. They control your attention. One researcher, Yuri Hassan, a psychologist at Princeton University, told Wired that the movie takes over the brain responses of the viewers. But not all movies have the same effect. Tense dramatic scenes like robberies will dominate your attention, and 70% percent of your cortex will be synchronized with everyone else. But boring scenes like people walking in a square will sync up just 5 percent. So it seems Hollywood is finding a major ally in all this brain research. Rather than using test screenings to show how a film will do, maybe they'll get a little help from neuroscience. And if you're a movie buff, you probably wondered why we get so attached to fictional characters like James Bond. Trace and Ian explore that question in this video right here. A study in the annual review of psychology found that the brain reacted to real life interaction very similarly to when we're reading about fictional interactions mm. as well. So have you ever lost yourself in a movie? What are your best or worst movie going experiences? Let us know down in the comments below. Don't forget to hit those like and subscribe buttons so you don't miss a single DNews episode.